So this is section two, um, chapter two in the in year two applied book um, on conditional probability. And this section is actually entitled conditional probability. Now we've looked at in the previous um, section, uh, a reminder about uh, independent uh, events. And the reminder was that when things are independent, then to find their probability, you just do the probability of A times the probability of B. That's when they're independent. But what if things are not independent? What do we do if things are not independent? Okay, when things are not independent, we call them conditional, which basically means that one event is affected by another. So for example, an example of something which is independent would be you take a card out of a pack, uh, you record its value and you put it back. So it's always out of 52. Um, conditional probability, an example would be you take a card out of a pack, you don't return it. That will mean that the probabilities change and the probabilities will change and it all depends on the card that you've just taken out. So if you take a, a heart out of the pack, that's going to affect the probability of picking another heart out of the pack or any other card. But if you pick a spade out of the pack, that's going to affect it in a different way. So conditional probability is where things are dependent. And we've got um, notation for that. And it's written like this. And this means, um, we say this, the probability of A given B. In other words, what's the probability of A given that B has just taken place? What's the probability of A given that B has just taken place? Yeah, and that's conditional probability. Now, if things are independent, then let's go over here. If things are independent, actually, the probability of A is going to remain unchanged. It doesn't matter what B is doing. A will always be the same. So the probability of A given B, if things are independent, well, it's just a probability of A. If it's the probability of A given that B hasn't happened, it's still the probability of A. So independent events are like the opposite to conditional events. And uh, what we're going to be looking at is working out these uh, probabilities. OK, so let's have a look at an example. A uh, question like this, I'd probably start with a Venn diagram. Well, it's asking for a, a two way table. So we've got a school that's got um, 75 students in year 12. So we've got um, the students, they either do humanities or science. So humanities, science, like this. Um, 75 students in year 12, uh, only 25 study humanities uh, and 37 study only science subjects. So 25, 37. And what we're gonna have um, actually at the side here is if they, so I might need to change these numbers since we're doing a two way table. So this box is going to be, oh actually let's change this. So it's gonna be study humanities, don't study humanities, um, study science, don't study science. Okay, so now we can put this, the, the numbers in the correct place. So uh, 25 study only humanities. 
So if they just do humanities, 25 goes here. Probably going to need some totals as well. So we'll just add that in. Like that. Okay, so we've done that. 37 study only science. So that would be the 37 there. 11 study both. So 11 goes in here. So I can see straight away that I can add these totals up now. This is going to be 36. And this is going to be 48. And I know that this number down in the bottom corner is 75. So if I now do 75, take away 36, that leaves 39 to go here. And if I do 75 and I take away 48, that leaves me with 27 here. So that means that that number there must be two. So there's my two way table. Right, um, okay, so that's part A. Part B, we wanna work out these probabilities. So the first one doesn't do science, doesn't do humanities, two out of the 75. Second one, they study science given that they study humanities. Now this given that basically means we're just looking at the humanities students and we want to know how many of them study science. So if you were to say it, it's the probability that they do science given that they already do that they do humanities so we're already given the information that they do humanities so we're only looking at humanity students and there are only 36 of those so out of those 36 humanity students so there's the h part how many of those 36 do science 11 yeah so that's that one there and the last bit so the probability that they do humanities, given that they don't do science, right? So how many people don't do science? Uh, yeah, don't do science. Here they are. There's 27 of them don't do science. Right, out of those that don't do science, how many do humanities? 25. And it's that easy. So you might find it helpful when you do these questions to think of the second letter as the out of what goes in the denominator. So when you've got something like this, you might find this helpful, that that value is what goes in the denominator. Okay, you can think of it as the out of. So it's out of that bit of the bottom. So it's only going to be out of what B is rather than out of the whole thing. So notice that the first one was out of everything. It's not conditional. But the next two were just out of. First one out of what's H? 36, probability of H. Next one out of not science, 27. So that restricts the denominator. Right, so you've got two four-sided dice are thrown together and the sum of the numbers uh, is sh uh, shown is recorded. So the sum of the numbers, okay. In part A, what we're going to do is to draw a sample space diagram showing all the possible outcomes. So if I call this dice 1 here and I have dice 2 here, so on dice one, I can get one, two, three, four. Dice two is also going to be one, two, three, four. I'm going to put some lines in like this. Okay, and on this question, we are working out the sum of the numbers on the dice. All we need to do is to add them up, put them in the grid. So we're going to have 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there's my two way table done in part A. Part B, given that at least one dice lands on the three, find the probability that the sum on the two dice is exactly five. So it actually means, like well, this way around, What's the probability? Find the probability of what? What are we finding the probability of? That the sum on the two dice, sum uh, is five on the two dice, given that at least one dice lands on a three. At least one dice lands on three. So this is the probability that we actually need to work out. So we start with the second bit, at least one of the dice lands on a three because it's out of that value. So if we highlight those, if one of the dice lands on a three, then it means we have these outcomes here. At least one of them lands on the three. Now the six is where both lands on the three, but it's at least that. I can see that's one, two, three, four, five, six, that's seven outcomes. So it's out of seven. And then the sum is five. So out of those outcomes, how many of those seven are fives? It's two. So the answer is going to be two out of seven. In part C, state a module and uh, assumption. Well, we've assumed that. Oops. Assume that these these things are independent. So assumed independence yeah that the um the probability that one uh, light lands on a dice uh, lands on a certain number doesn't affect the other one and we're also assuming that um, all outcomes equally likely so all outcomes equally likely yeah So you should now do exercise 2B on pages 23 to 24. And just a quick reminder of uh, this rule that we had uh, for um, this conditional uh, probability or the way that we write this conditional probability. So if you have something like this, this means the probability of A given B. Now, I'm not going to put, well, I could put in brackets, this has just happened, but it may not be that it's one event followed by another. Yeah, it's just the probability of A, A has taken place. So what's the probability, um, sorry, B has taken place. So what's the probability of A? Yeah, B has taken place. So it's basically out of B. And this basically means how much of A is B. So how much of A is in B.